Today, we'll be talking about what to look out for, how to assess if a website or file is safe, and generally things to avoid. So first up, when we access a site, we should check that it's using HTTPS. And this is pretty common these days, and generally there's no excuse for a site not to be using it. HTTPS encrypts our connection and tells us firstly, that we're communicating with the site that we intended to communicate with. And secondly, it prevents anyone or anything from reading our communications. For example, when we log into a website, we want to make sure that first, it's the correct website for the address. And secondly, that no one else can see the credentials we're using. So how do we check this? Well, first we can see a lock icon in our browser. And this will tell us whether a website has HTTPS and if their certificate is valid. If there isn't HTTPS or if there is something wrong, or if there is a warning that says the certificate is not valid, then you should be cautious and consider if the site that you're on is legitimate or not. And I would avoid things such as logging in or sharing any sensitive information that doesn't have these things in check. Next, we want to be mindful of the domain or the URL of the sites that we're accessing. Often, cybercriminals will register a domain that looks very similar to a popular website. For example, our tcm-sec.com, someone might attempt to register tcm-security.com or tcmsec-oneword.com or thecybermentalsecurity.com. So let's take a look and see if any of these are available. So here we are at Google, and I'm just going to search for by web domains and something like GoDaddy or Reg123 or any of these. Let's just click on the top one, names.co.uk. I'm going to accept these, and I'm going to look for something like tcm-sec.com because our official site that we already own only has one dash in. Let's see if we can find this and see whether it's available. And it looks like it is. So tcm-sec.com is available. .co.uk is available. I wonder if there are alternatives for this. In fact, we could just go ahead and register tcmsec.co.uk and then start targeting people and tricking them to visit our website instead of the official tcm-sec.com website. And you can see how easy it is to buy domain names and how cheap it is as well, because usually there's a deal on the first year. So here, if we were to buy all three, in fact, we could get this tcm-sec.com one free of charge. So we could register this. So this is something that you definitely need to be wary of when you're browsing the internet, because people will buy these domains and then trick you into visiting these websites. So when you receive a link on social media or in your email, etc., if it's to a service that you use, let's say your online banking, you don't need to click it. You just need to go directly to the site if you know the address, or you can go to Google, type in the name of your bank or the service and visit the official site that way. This way you can avoid these tricks with similar looking domains. Now we could say, hey, you can inspect the link, make sure it's correct. But there are all sorts of tricks that we can use to make a URL appear legitimate. So for example, if we take our tcmsec.com website, we know that https colon slash slash takes us there, but somebody might own the domain, for example, safe browsing or safe browsing verified.com. And what they might do is you might get a link that says, hey, https colon slash slash tcmsec.com dot safe browsing dash verified.com like this. And this is actually just using subdomains underneath the safe browsing verified.com. And you might get some other things at the end here. And if you instantly look at this, you think, oh, this is fine. This is okay. I know this website but actually you're going to a different place. So it's quite easy to manipulate a URL to make it look legitimate. And there are lots of different tricks that people can use with different characters. And again, using what we call subdomains here, which is a, a topic for another day, but something to be on the lookout for. Generally speaking, if I receive a link to something, especially with online banking. So for example, let's say if I was banking with HSBC, I would just go HSBC, into Google if I didn't know the address. And this top one here, www.hsbc.co.uk, I can come in and I can access this site and log in and do everything I need securely. I wouldn't trust a random link that landed into my inbox. 
or one that I clicked on a forum or received in a message or got forwarded to or something like this. Now, I know this sounds like a lot of effort every time you want to access something or you get a link from a friend. Generally speaking, it's worth considering where the link came from. Do you know or trust the sender? And is it something that comes with urgency or reward? Because generally speaking, social engineering attacks are based around the urgency or need to do something like pay an overdue bill or a reward like having a long lost relative win the Australian lottery on your behalf. And if you're in Australia, maybe a long lost relative winning the lottery here in the UK. If it's the first time you're visiting a site, Trustpilot and other sites can also give you some indication as to whether it's legitimate or not. So a little bit of Googling goes a long way. So next, we're gonna have a look at downloads and files. And let's start with where you're getting your downloads from. We only want to use reputable sites. And if you can, getting things like software from their official source rather than somewhere like a mass download site is much, much better. Sites that offer lots of software packages and downloads often in best case scenario, package them up with adware. And in worst case scenario, it'll come with malware or spyware. For example, if I wanted to download VMware, I would not download it from a place like SourceForge, I would get it from vmware.com. Now I wanted to also talk about sites like online banking, trading sites, and really anywhere where there's either a lot of your personal information or maybe your card or banking information where it's stored and you can carry out transactions. My main tip for you is if you have kids, try not to do your online banking on the same computer that your kids use. Same goes for any shared computer. There are so many free games, apps, sets of icons that are packaged with malware targeted at children. It's just not worth the risk. I know it's not always possible if you have a shared family PC, but a safe way to do this is to do your online banking on your smartphone. And something else that we all hate doing, but we really need to do because it's very important, is keep our computer and software up to date. A lot of browsers will do silent updates now in the background, so they update themselves without any interaction from us, which is awesome. But if you ever get a pop-up saying, hey, new update, please install for your browser, operating system, or something like this, you should go ahead and do that. Security updates and patches are released regularly and they really help keep you safe online. So that's it for our safe browsing introduction and try to just remember these key points. Make sure the site is using HTTPS, otherwise we don't know that we're actually talking to the site that we connected to and others may be able to see our communication. Links can be tricky. Always try to visit sites directly and avoid clicking on them if you can. And of course, be cautious of where you get your files and downloads from. Try and use the official sources rather than somewhere else that is re-hosting the file. If you can, keep some separation between the important things like your online banking and shared computers. And of course, I know it's a pain, but try and keep everything up to date. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that it helps you stay safe online in the future. Catch you next time.